In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to give you an overview of basic audio editing in the timeline. We have a video track on track number one, and on the audio track one, we're going to drag down and drop an audio clip. What are some of the ways in which you can simply edit it? In order to see a little more of the audio in this case, we're going to enlarge the area and we'll take the width of the audio track and make it bigger. Now when you're on the audio track, you notice the blue line. That is your volume line, or in audio terms, it's your decibels. So you can move the whole line up and down by hovering the mouse with the up and down arrow on the line and increasing it or lowering it. And you will see the variation. Now if you want to go back at any time to normal, you right click on that and then you click on reset volume level that will set it back to where it was when you started. So that's a very nice way to get back to normal if you don't like your changes. Let's look at some of the ways we can simply edit this on the timeline. One of the easiest ways to edit your audio is to use audio keyframes. Keyframes are the little white dots that you see on your audio track. Now to add an audio track dot, all you need to do is hover over the line again, hold the control button down on your keyboard, and left click with the mouse. That will add a dot, and that dot is a keyframe. So now, for example, I can hover over the left one without using the control key, and drag it down, and now because I have two of them, I've automatically made it so that my audio slowly fades in. Now if I want to move over the length of the fade, I simply hover over my second dot, move farther along in the timeline, and then I'm going to let go, and now I have a slower period in which I begin to fade in the audio. Now if you want the audio to be a little more precise, right now it's a plus 0.7 decibels. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But you can click as many of these points as you want anywhere in the audio line, and especially if you have multiple ones, like here I could lower it completely in this segment, and that would basically turn the audio off between this keyframe and the subsequent keyframe. So that's some of the ways in which you can modify that. Now if I want to remove that, all I need to do is hover over it and drag and let go, and it will remove it when I drag it off the track. So that's the way in which you can remove any of these that you've done. There's a little bit of a lag there you see, but it does remove that audio keyframe. There's some other things you can do with audio keyframes to be more precise. If I'm on this track and it's highlighted, I have the button above that says keyframe. Let's click on that and see what we can do. When you look here, I have a volume setting and here I have the exact keyframes. Now again with keyframes, you move from keyframe by using the little plus on the left to go from one to the other. Let's go back to the second one. Now this gives me the decibel here. And I can also change it by using the slider on the left side. I can move it up or I can move it down. If I want to get it exactly to zero, what I could do to be precise is just hover over the numbers, type in zero, press enter on the keyboard, and now I have this exactly at zero, which is what I want. I can also take the next keyframe by clicking on the left or right arrow. And right now it's 0.7. I can change that. I can right click and I say duplicate previous keyframe. Now this one will also be at zero decibels, neither raised nor lowered. So if you want precision on the value of any of the keyframes in your audio track, this is where I would suggest that you go. If I want to add another one, I can simply click over here. I can right click and say add new keyframe, or I can simply say duplicate from next keyframe. And now this will have the same value as the one to the right. So this is a way in which you can precisely control the keyframe values. It's a little harder to do it when you're sliding up and down, but you can do it very precisely here. You can also take any of the keyframes and move them left or right to adjust where they are on the timeline. So that's a great way in which you can begin to modify with great precision the use of keyframes. Again, if you want to go back to normal, you simply right click and you can click reset volume level 
and everything is back to normal. All the keyframes you've created are erased and you can start from scratch. Let me give you another major tool that's available for simple audio editing on the timeline. If you right click on it, you have an option that says edit audio. And I just want to focus on the trim. You also have a shortcut key, control alt T. Let's click on trim. This opens up this pop-up screen. Now what I use this for mostly is to trim either the beginning or the ending of my audio. You see here I have some silence at the beginning. If I don't want that silence, I can modify it. So I can either click on the plus magnifying glass on the right, or I can take my mouse and drag up at the top, which I like to do. Move my playhead over here where I want to start. Say I want it to start right at the first place where I have audio. And if that's the case, I can click in my mark in, click there. And what it will do is it will, when I'm done with this, it will shorten it. I can also go to the end and I can click again. And let's say there's where I want my mark out. I'll click on that. And it will give me the in and out position on my video. I don't find that all that useful right now, but I will click on OK. And now what it does, if you notice, is it actually took my audio track and it shortened it. Let's change our view so we can see the whole track here. And it did shorten it. So if I want it to begin to match the beginning of the video, I need to take and drag it to the left. And now it will start out in the very first frame of the video, playing the audio with no silence to start with. So if we play this for a second, let's do that and see what we get here. Okay, it's a little hot, obviously, so let's just lower the audio a little bit. So that summarizes two of the tools that you have to work with audio on the timeline in CyberLink PowerDirector.